Welcome back, everyone. We are about to head into Super Mario Odyssey with Lysol. Um, take it away for us. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Lysol. Um, as Ali said, thank you. Uh, I'm going to be doing Super Mario Odyssey today. I'm going to be playing Minimum Captures, which is my favorite category for <laughs> Super Mario Odyssey. Um, and I'm really excited to show it to you guys today. Um, so yeah, I guess, I guess we'll jump right into it. Are uh, you ready with the timer? Give me one moment. Okay, time is ready. All right, three, two, one, and go. And we're off. So to explain to anybody who doesn't know what Minimum Captures is, it's a category extension, so it's not on the main leaderboard. Um, but basically the idea is there's a big mechanic in Minimum Capture, sorry, in Super Mario Odyssey, which is capturing. Um, and this is sort of somewhere between a speed run and a challenge run because we are aiming to not use that mechanic as much as we can um, while still finishing the game as fast as possible. So uh, that's pretty much what the category is. Um, 13 is the lowest number we can get and that is the number we will be getting. It's not like a, <laughs> you know, ah, 14 will do. We have to get 13. Um, and that's because of the version that we're playing on. So this is the um, patched version of the game. At least I'm playing it is. And we are playing in one player. So two player allows you to do more tricks, um, which I won't be doing because uh, they're hard and also because they take a long time. So I didn't think they'd be very interesting for a show goes. Um, and the other trick is called the nut jump. It's infamous if you've heard of it. Um, really nutty jump <laughs> and it's uh, super difficult. So I decided not to do that one for this either, which is why we're, we are doing the um, patch version of the game. So yeah, that's minimum captures. Hopefully that explains it. This is our first trick here called frog skip. Um, it's a pretty high ledge that you have to jump up there. Uh, I generally get it nowadays, but I remember the first time I ever tried to get it, it took me three months. I don't know, it was the first trick I ever learned in the game. So it took a while. But yeah, that's frog skip because otherwise you have to capture one of those frogs to get up here. So clean, clean. Nice. Uh, yeah, you guys may well know minimum captures. There's a chance you've heard it before if you are a fan of Small Ant or CJYA. The current world record holder for three of the four categories is Red Slay, and the other category, oh sorry, two of the, sorry CJ, two of the categories is Red Slay, one of the categories is CJ, and the other category is the 80% world record holder, Tyrone. And Tyrone holds the world record in um, this category that I'm playing now. Uh, his record is a 103, which, uh, <laughs> don't compare it to my time, please, because <laughs> it's very good. Um, but yeah. This is the first required capture of the run, is this wire. There is no way to skip it. Um, even in the lowest capture categories, we have no idea how you could ever skip this capture. So that's one of the required ones. Cool. So we sort of got, um, do we have a bit of time for me to do some plugs? Absolutely. Go for it. Yeah. So we are um, on speed runs. We're a group doing speed run events to raise money for charity. We're raising money for cure cancer this time. And they fund early career cancer researchers working across all cancers and all areas of cancer research. If you'd like to donate, you can go to donate.ozspeedruns.com. Check out the link in the chat that should be coming up. And um, there are also, you can put your donation money towards incentives. Um, we're making a big push, I think, to try and get one last extra run into the, the marathon. But you can also put your donations towards naming the, main, uh, the file name, Code Lyrico or saving or harvesting Little Sister in Bioshock. So keep those donors coming. It's very exciting stuff. I, uh, yeah, it's for a great cause, guys. So if, if you want to, um, please do donate. I think that would be very cool. Uh, I can't wait to see the sister get harvested. That is the obvious choice. Oh. <laughs> so the trick I, I was just doing before, when I jumped up that waterfall, there is actually an invisible wall there um, that I jumped over. That's called First Moon Skip. The first moon usually requires you to uh, use a chain chomp. You capture the chain chomp and break the rock open, but obviously we're not doing that. Um, we do need the first moon though, because the first moon activates the um, opening boss fight. So we are just going to ignore the laws of physics in a second here. 
This is cool. We are speedrunners. We are speedrunners. This is called a surface clip. Um, and you use uh, the Maru being pushed. Oh my gosh. Maru being pushed into the water um, to get inside the wall. It's a little bit finicky because if I go too low there, I can fall into the void. But as you saw, if I go too high, I go back in bounds. So we're just going to have to clip again real quick. We do what's called a roll cancel uh, here to um, get Maru enough speed to sort of, sort of zoom him through the wall. These are used in a few places in quite a lot of runs, but in this run it's pretty much only used here. Not much used in any percent anymore either, I can think of. It was a pretty classic trick. This is one of those tricks where some days you'll never miss it, and some days it just hates you. <laughs> Today is one of those days. There we go. Alright. So we're just going to go over here and grab the first moon. There we go. So that is our next capture skip. We have skipped the chain chomp. Um, and the reason that uh, I went up to the top first, you might notice, you might be wondering why didn't I just do that in the first place. The reason that I did that jump and got the checkpoint up top is because there's a cutscene right in front of me, um, which instead of going forward and wasting my time on that cutscene, I am going to whoop up here. So we can just skip that. Um, and then we'll go straight into the boss fight, which will give us the moons we need to leave Cap Kingdom. So it's a pretty broken kingdom. Um, in the other categories for minimum captures, especially three and four captures, um, it is even nuttier because as you can see, this is capture number two uh, and we will get three and four here as well because Madame Brutal is unskippable in this version of the game. Oops. Um, so we have to do this fight and capture her chain chomp. But in three captures and four captures, you can do CRCs um, that basically allow you to get to that island, which is right behind Madame Brutal right now, if you can see it. Usually you can't get to that, but um, with some insane teleportation tricks, you can get up there. Um, so the further into min caps you get, the more nutty this can get, gets. But it's pretty cool in um, 13 captures too, so. Nice. Um, I noticed that you're playing the game in French, is it? Is there yeah. a particular reason for that? <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, there's a few reasons. Firstly, uh, morale. It makes me feel better, um, because if I'm bad at the game, then I can say it's because I'm not playing the fastest language. Uh, secondly, it just makes me feel good, because French looks pretty. <laughs> but it's not the fastest language. Uh, it is not. The fastest language is um, simplified Chinese for this category. It was thought to be Japanese for three years and then only within the last year they realized that simplified chinese has actually been the fastest all along but french is definitely not the fastest but i figure i'm only going to be losing seconds anyway so it's no big deal it yeah is... and i think uh yeah as you pointed out you know being enthused and, and having your morale <laughs> is actually really important for speed running too it, is. it really is you know and sometimes you just see a cool French word and you're like, hell yeah. And that's that gives me the time save, so it's important. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, you're reminding me of uh, playing Pokemon through in French and some of the Pokemon names are so good. Yeah, man. And there's a lot of puns. I think especially in Nintendo games, they really love puns. So, yeah. like for example, captures in English is a pun because you use your hat to capture them. Um, and in French, it's, uh... Oh gosh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, I know, right? I didn't think about it until I realized the French one is Chappy Morphose, which means, um, capture, but, like, in French, it means, like, hat transform, basically. So, yeah, oh, I just thought that was cool, how they wow. translate stuff. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, French, um, yeah, I would say probably one of the slower languages, because French is notoriously word wordy. Um, I don't know if you guys were here for... 
the Breath of the Wild speedrun yesterday, but I believe, I'm not a very good Breath of the Wild speedrunner, but I believe that the fastest language in that category for vocal lines is actually French, because although they take a while to write, the French are very quick at speaking. So <laughs> it's faster for that game. Um, I think yeah. German is also very fast for Breath of the Wild. I believe it's basically equal with French. Whoops. Yeah, it's interesting how in different uh, games the language uh, interacts with the speed uh, differently because you either have text rendering or voice lines or you have those games where you have the crazy localizers have to get like different voice lines but mm. voice acted in the same amount of time because it's the same. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting how the different languages can take different times. I'm going to be doing a trick here which is called... It is generally called Daylight Savings Time Abuse. This particular version of it is called um, Manual Daylight Savings Time Abuse, which is to say I'm manually changing the time. I planted a seed just before now, uh, if you were paying close attention. So it is now grown because 20 minutes have passed um, forcibly. So we basically can get that moon really quick um, through manuing. And so if you are very consistent at this run, which I generally don't consider myself to be, but if you're really consistent, you can do um, daylight savings time abuse, which is where you set your switch so that it is, say, like, five minutes until daylight saving times hits. So you pick a specific date and a specific time at the start of every run. And then when you go in that room, it'll automatically trigger daylight savings time, and you don't even have to do any menuing. So that saves you a bunch of time if you can be consistent. But um, if you miss it, then you have to do it manually, so... For me, it's not personally. I'm gonna say, it, but... your menuing is some of the slickest I've seen all weekend. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I guess I, I do it every run, so you get pretty used to it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, with Mario's movement here, um, are you using motion controls because it's um, like again preferred or better? Or um, yeah, the fastest way to move in this game in terms of basic movement is. Uh, boosting so um you can roll around and that's the fastest way to move and roll boosting um is done by shaking the controller a lot of the movement in super mario odyssey the fastest way to move you can move normally if you don't use any um you can move normally if you don't use any motion controls but the fastest way to move is by using motion controls so i do use them a lot throughout the run i'm not just shaking around my controller for fun um I just got a bullet bill manipulation there, which is very exciting. I sometimes miss that, so. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I will definitely be shaking around my controller a lot, especially just um, moving around the place, rolling. We use it a lot. And in a few captures, you do use it, though naturally in this category, that is less of a concern, because <laughs> I'm trying not to do those. It is unfortunate, I think, games that have uh, motion controls required, admittedly, because um, if you've ever played this game handheld, it is <laughs> very difficult to see the screen while you're shaking it furiously. <laughs> so personally, I would prefer if it did have a button alternative, but it does let you play without using motion controls. It's just not as fast. I'm going to be coming up to a um, bit in the run here where I would love to do another clip for you guys, but sadly this is the patch version of the game, um, which is the tragedy of Sphinx Clip. Basically, um, roll cancel clips uh, were made extremely hard in the patch version of the game um, as compared to the unpatched version. It used to be that um, in any percent people would clip through that Sphinx and never have to talk to him at all. Um, but then the game was patched, and so people couldn't do that anymore without it being like absolutely frame perfect, so nobody did. Um, and unfortunately that created a bit of a divide, as it often does in speed games, where the fastest version of the game was the unpatched version, and the unpatched version of the game was really difficult to get your hands on. Um, so for quite a while, SMO's fastest version was 1.0, the unpatched version. Luckily, um, a couple, um, probably about a year, Maybe a year and a half later, Nintendo released another patch, um, which still had roll cancel clips patched out, but the loading times were super improved. So even though um, 
you can't do roll cancels in the latest version of the game easily anymore. Uh, it's still faster, which is great for accessibility. I think it's important in speedruns um, to have the any percent versions being accessible for anybody new who wants to uh, do the thing. Because in order to get the unpatched version, you have to factory reset your switch. And for anybody who has Animal Crossing saves, <laughs> that is unfortunate. I think you've just touched on in, in like that little explanation, like a ton of really interesting things about like just speed running and getting into it and the different quirks of like, you know, leaderboard stuff about, you mentioned that it's still possible with like a one frame possibility to, to do the Sphinx, mm -hmm. is it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so like, uh, were there players who were like, oh, I'm just still gonna like, I'm still trying to get that one frame. I don't trick. know if anybody went for that actually, now that I think about it. I mean, there were also a couple other tricks um, in one point that 1.3 patched out. Oh, sorry, 1.2 this was. There were a couple other tricks that 1.2 patched out. Um, and generally, it just wasn't considered worth it because there wasn't just Sphinx. There was also Cascade Kingdom. You couldn't do first moon skip and a couple other things like that. Um, so it was just generally considered nobody was going to update. You know, the, it was sort of, I guess it just depends on community consensus. Because the consensus was, we're not updating because it's slower. So most of the runners kept the old version. Um, yeah. But it, is, it is always unfortunate that when new runners come in and they assumedly have the patched version of the game, um, that they can't do the same tricks that everybody else is doing. Yeah, and that, that's an interesting, like a couple of other interesting things I think touched on in that sort of thing where like you do have... You know, a, a speed running is an individual pursuit, but it's often run as part of a community. So, as you say, like a community consensus is holds a really like significant role in the in what is an individual challenge. Definitely, um, definitely. Yeah, and you get and, a lot uh, of that with when it comes to like uh, patch. Sorry, not patch. Like uh, glitchless and glitched speed runs. You know, some categories, uh, some speed games will have them separated, glitched and glitchless. Some won't even consider. Like SMO, there's no glitchless category because um, it, it just doesn't make sense for the game. But it definitely depends on community consensus because some glitches don't make the game fun anymore. And so those divides end up happening. Definitely a game by game thing. Yeah. And I think there was like one last thing I think about about, you know, just that, that whole uh, interaction there that I was, um, was thinking about. Maybe it'll come back to me later. But, um, yeah, generally, like, just all of these interesting things about speedrunning as a hobby, all, all together in, uh, you know, in that sort of one, <laughs> one <laughs> pivot point for this game, having a patch. Oh, load times. That's what I was thinking. Because yeah. obviously, um, so this game is run on RTA, and you've mentioned that sort of uh, interaction between load times and and the leaderboard, or, well, we might as well upgrade because the load times have been reduced. Mm hmm Yeah, I guess, I don't know if it's the same for, I'm pretty sure it's the same for most Switch games. Um, it's, there's not really much point in removing load times when everybody has the same specs, and it's a lot more difficult to program Hard, timers yeah. that can do that sort of thing. Like, I think there are some uh, types of timers that can see when the screen is black and stop the timer for that amount of time, but it's it's just not worth it most of the time, especially given the spec. Yeah, and it's loading. so different to tune it for different games as well. Yeah. Like they're loading screens. Like, sometimes there's loading hidden behind a cutscene, say, like, mm. do you... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's unfortunate. <laughs> That was not intentional. Did I get the checkpoint outside? I did. Okay, we're good. It's just good. like 20 seconds of time loss. It's fine. No big deal. No big deal. These are classic any percent strats to kill uh, the cowboy man. Um, you just do backflips, ground pound into him. It's, it's cool when it's done correctly. When it's not done correctly, it's lame. But that was... The second time was cool, so just, just pay attention to the second time. Yeah. We're all good. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, this is just so I don't get the world record. You know, I want to be nice to poor old Tyrone and his <laughs> 103, you know. I'm generous like that. <laughs> so, it would be embarrassing if I beat him during a showcase. <laughs> okay, you're right. Like, the French text is very motivation motivating. It is, right? You like, know, you when they tell me, moon, like, oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. 
great. But I didn't just get it, I want it. Like, <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's way better. So that's the first uh, three, four kingdoms. We're powering through them. Um, there's not too much special in terms of minimum captionness in these kingdoms. They are all different routes um, because oftentimes the moons that require captures will be faster. So for example, in that um, kingdom, there's moons behind little zippers in the wall that I can't get because they're behind captures. And uh, moons that you need to be in a fish capture to get, which are faster. So I am doing little small changes to the any percent route throughout this whole thing in order to make it a minimum capture speed run. Um, Wooded Kingdom is actually pretty similar, funnily enough. There's not a lot of captures that make things faster in Wooded Kingdom. Um, there are sections where you would usually get a, uh, uh, what are they called? Uproots. Um, but they don't make a big difference to the route, so this one's pretty similar. We do bludgeon the bunny. Oh, <laughs> unfortunate, but you know, we got to get our moons. <laughs> Some, yep. Some things are more important. There's no time for, yep, no time to, to have pity on the poor bunny. Yep. All right, and the Sphinx room, uh, we got a bunch of coins, so now we can buy a couple moons in some of the kingdoms, which is faster in a few of them. We'll be doing that in Luncheon and Snow Kingdom as well. Which is why we have 300, because they're 100 each. So as long as we don't die 10 times, we should be fine. Yeah, so as we go through these worlds, is there a there's a moon limit to get to the boss? Yeah. Is that what we're going for? Exactly. Yep. So there's those dotted circles in the top left, and we have to get that many moons in order to carry on. So any percent is very consistent in the like numbers of moons it gets, because there is a very specific minimum number you can get to progress. Um, which is different for each kingdom. And basically, we just go through and get the fastest moons um, as fast as we can. For And, f you know, for this category, the uh, fastest moons are sometimes different to the fastest one in, in any percent, but largely the same. Cool. And so, yeah, if you guys are enjoying this run, um, don't forget you can donate towards our cause, which is Cure Cancer. Um, and yeah, if you'd like to put any comments, I can read them out, or you can also make a note of which incentive you'd like to attach your uh, donation to. So I'm dropping some links in the chat now. Great. So I'm going to do a little bit of sorcery here. You're not meant to be in this area um, at this point in the game, which is why there's no ways of getting up. There's no rocket flowers here. There's no captures for you to blow up the wall with. But uh, we can just sh uh, scale this wall um, using black magic. And up we are. Uh, so wow. if we just go around the, the side, easy as... Um, generally, how you get up to that spot is actually through a trick called Nut Clip, which um, I am admittedly not the best at, which is why I never attempt it. Uh, but that one is basically the backup strat to Nut Clip, which is... Quite a difficult uh, any percent strategy that a lot of runners use in their runs. All right. Watching you move around is so cool. <laughs> um, like just being able to like, yep, I'm just gonna go over a huge gap and every everything's fine. <laughs> Yeah, just know how far you can go. Yeah, no, it's... The movement in this game is definitely... I think it's why it's my favorite speed game. Because um, there's just so many options. You know, cap throws, long jumps. You can do rolls and side flips. And it's just so much stuff you can do. Um, and there's really no limit to how good you can get at it either. Like, when I do watch Tyrone do speed runs, I do die a little bit inside <laughs> Because my movement's okay, I get the job done, but holy crap, the uh, people who hold the world records for any percent in this game are just absolutely busted. Um, and it is, if if my movement is fun to watch, man, you should see theirs, it's insane. They basically teleport from place to place. Um, but you know, it's kind of, it's nice to know that there's not really any, um, there's not really any cap to the skill, 
you can get in this game. Mm. You know, you just keep getting yeah. better and better and better. Because uh, I think especially in 3D games, that tends to be a bit of a thing. Um, 2D games, you can sort of get a sense of perfection. But 3D games, there's so many different options in every crevice that, you know, you can lose time very easily, but you can also... Um, it's almost more satisfying when you end up getting that almost perfect movement. Yeah, I totally agree um, that, like, it's frustrating sometimes to think about pixel perfect. Well, like, I mean, it happens in 3D games, but a lot of the time when you're learning a run, it's like, yeah, I can, like, refine this so much. Like, there's more room for refinement than in a 2D game. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. I've got a couple of donors, if you've got some time. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, so we've got $50 from Neo, who says, put this towards the OOT bonus run, please. And yeah, just a reminder, if you enjoyed watching Mikami and Trip run Ocarina of Time just before, we can get an encore, like a double encore, because they, uh, they did an extra bonus run before, but we can get an, a, an extra, extra run out of them at the very end of uh, our Ozpeed run marathon. And another $30 from Breezy Z, who says, let's go, Rachel. <laughs> Let's go. By the way, Rachel is nice, so I can use her first name because we are tight like that. Yeah, I know a streamer, but it's not a big deal to me, lol. <laughs> Thank you, Breeze. Very cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a uh, community meme that we enjoy. <laughs> it's good. I was hoping. Hoping we're not... Uh, <laughs> I read it out, I thought, as long as we're not uh, uh, um, giving away too much in our uh, speedrun marathon. <laughs> and I will get your incentives updated. Thank you, um, Neo, for that contribution. All right. By the way, I was just doing a um, trick called Tower Skip, and before that, Flower Road Skip. So there's just a, a couple uh, funky little jumps that we can do to skip a, a bunch of sections. Flower Road Skipper only saves three seconds, so it's really not worth doing it, but I always do. Um, and then Tower Road, uh, Tower Road, yes, nice, very cool. Tower Skip uh, is just basically, we can do some cool backflips up there to skip the tower. Um, sometimes the tower is faster, especially if you have the capture, the Onion Boy, but if you don't have the Onion Boy, it's just not worth going in the tower. It takes too long to get up, which is why we skip it. And that's Wooded Kingdom. Easy clap. I do, on occasion, have been known to miss Flower Road Skip, but I'm glad it hasn't happened mid-marathon, so we'll take it. <laughs> Alright. On to Cloud and Lost. Nothing too crazy in Cloud and Lost, in fact. Cloud and Lost are actually, I believe, the only kingdoms, other than Ruined Kingdom as well, um, that are completely unchanged in minimum captures, because there's just not a lot in them. So, Cloud Kingdom, you basically just punch Bowser in the crotch repeatedly. And then in Lost Kingdom, it's pretty short, so there's not many captures to get anyway. <laughs> yeah, time for Metric Kingdom. Not quite. I am sorry if I'm spoiling the game for anybody. It'd be a terrible tragedy if you didn't realize that there was going to be kingdoms between Metro Kingdom, and I just spoiled that for you. And I'm also skipping all the cutscenes, so sadly you guys can't enjoy all of that. I'm terribly sorry. But hey, them's the breaks. Right, yeah, the story of this one is we're, tr we're trying to foil the wedding planning. Yeah, it? it's kind of weird. It's kind of morally grey, the story of this one, in my personal opinion, because morally Bowser gray. and Peach, they're, they're just trying to get married. I mean, Peach hasn't <laughs> specifically said, hey, I don't want to get married to this dude. She seems to be cool with it. So I think Mario is just being a bit of an asshole and not letting Peach move on. But who am I to judge? I mean, my other theory, I mean, of course, she... is that uh, Mario yeah. is jealous, not of Peach, but of Bowser. <laughs> so... That's an idea. <laughs> but we do seem I to mean, just be missing yeah, at the very, the very end cutscene of this is good with Peach's uh, response. That's true. She basically says, leave me alone, both of you, which I respect. Good for her. Yeah. More yeah. spoilers, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. Alright. 
This jump is called the, uh, what is it called? Tree? What is it called? Meme tree, that's right. Um, it's not very difficult, but people were very excited when they found it when the game came out, and so people are still slightly excited by it today. But it basically means that we can go around the side of the kingdom, and we can avoid getting captured, or uh, not captured in the, you know, min captures service, but we can avoid being kidnapped um, by collector. So we just go around the side, we can collect moons as we go, and then we basically sneak up behind Klepter and bop him before he can do anything sneaky. Yeah, definitely a very high level trick jump in order to get over there. You can see I did a, a triple jump, um, very complicated stuff. <laughs> there is a community in SMO, um, Super Mario Odyssey that is, that really enjoys finding complicated jumps, um, more complicated than I can do admittedly, uh, because they have a lot of crazy movement in there and sort of frame perfect stuff called trick jumpers, um, and they do like to jump from one wall to another wall even if there is ground in between, <laughs> but I respect their dedication to the craft. I love that, um, I guess that interact for like the relationship between like people who are, you know, who discover tricks or glitches and speedrunners, you know, mm -hmm. like they're not always the same people. That's true. Yeah. There's definitely glitch hunters in the community. Um, people who that's more their focus and then the people who speedrun. There is a very notable, uh, person who found a glitch in Super Mario Odyssey whose name, uh, will never die. And that is Dram. Uh, Dram discovered a trick called, uh, well, I won't tell you what it's called, but basically, um, he discovered a trick where you go into Sand Kingdom and you can do a tri tricky thing to basically teleport a little bit, it saves you a tiny bit of time. And when he discovered this trick, he said, you can call it whatever you want, just don't name it after me. <laughs> and so, of course, Sand Dram, or Dram, was born. Dram Strat, um, and that was quickly followed by Snow Dram, and a, a bunch of other tricks. Half of the tricks in this game are called Dram Strats, um, which makes no sense at all, because uh, they have no relation to the original trick, but um, yeah, that's why you never tell people what not to call something. <laughs> As soon as you mentioned the, the hunter's name, I was like, oh yeah, it's going to be Dram, yeah, Dram Clip Dram. or Dram Skip or... Yeah. <laughs> Poor Dram. Yeah, he didn't discover any of the other tricks. It, I guess it's just spite or whatever, <laughs> but <laughs> they are all called that. But yeah, there's, there's a bunch of really great uh, glitch hunters. Um, one that comes to mind is Circle. He's found so much incredible stuff, but there's, there's a bunch of them. Um, and hey, the speedruns... I certainly haven't discovered shit, so <laughs> uh, we wouldn't have the speedruns we have without them. So I'm going to be doing Night Metro now. We go around the side here rather than going through the oops, going through the intended route. Um, because it's a little bit maze-like, the intended route, but it's a lot easier to just go around the side. We can get this moon as we go. Nice. We got a couple of donuts. Go well. for it. Uh, we have $10 from Brinsky, who says, modding for Rachel is awful, smiley face. Haha. <laughs> 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 Good luck, Bert. You got this. Thank Thanks, you, Brinsky. We have twenty dollars from Jazbit Master. Let's go, Lysel. Let's get those capture. I mean, avoid those captures. Also, harvest the sisters, of course. So that will put us, I think, uh, tied in our Bioshock incentive at the moment. <laughs> Thank you, Jazz.
All right. There's a jump that I'm coming up to, which admittedly is not very difficult. It is literally just a long jump, followed by a cap dive. But um, for some reason, there's something terribly cursed about this jump. I don't know what it is or why, but that jump has messed up more runs than I think any other jump, other than maybe Perkino, which we will get to eventually. But man, that jump, it haunts my dreams at night. It is, it's not difficult, and that's why it's all the worse when you mess it up. Um, but basically, there's, there's a bit of a camera turn in the middle of it, and if the camera's turning while you're cap diving, you can sometimes miss your cap dive, but yeah, what a stinky jump. Alright, this is the next uh, mandatory capture in this run. We need to capture a Sherm in order to kill this uh, mecha thing, mecha wiggler. So, uh, there is a way of skipping this capture if you have two-player mode, which of course this is a one-player run, so we do not, but there is a way of skipping it technically. Um, which is called, it's generally called Morning Metro, Retro if you prefer. I'm a big fan of Retro, I've advocated for it, but I don't think it's stuck. Um, where basically you can go through a painting in Sand Kingdom in order to get to this kingdom early, before you're meant to. Um, and then you can do the teleportation glitch, which is called CRC. Um, in order to teleport to the mainland, you can beat Metro Kingdom before you ever even get there. And then by the time you get here later on in the run, you don't have to collect any moons, you just leave straight away. And so you don't ever have to fight the Mecha Wiggler. And that's how three and four caps skip, uh, skip that capture. Which is actually how the CRC trick was found. Um, I believe the first ever CRC that was performed was Retro. Or Morning Bet Red Metro. <laughs> but yeah, um, and then that trick went on to skip another 10 captures in the run, uh, which are mostly, there's three in Cascade Kingdom and uh, a bunch in, uh, a bunch in Bowser's Kingdom. So a whole heckin' bunch. Your community have uh, turned up real strong, and I'm not sure how many of these are in jokes and which ones I should weed out. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But yeah, there's a lot of love for you. So thank you, Near is Fresh, Jamie BSN, and DJ B Squared for your donos. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Uh, uh, yep. <laughs> I and I'm, I'm not I'm sure I want to know what Near said. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm guessing that you guys have a pretty good vibe with, with the gentle teasing going on. I'm yeah, hoping yeah, that's yeah. the We're case. Good. We're good. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I will, I'll read them out then. But you guys, uh, I'm trusting you guys in the Twitch chat that, that you are, you know, we're cool, okay? <laughs> All right, so from Newest Fresh, we've got, I don't know who this tiny streamer is, but she seems neat and hopes she gets big and tall one day. Speaking of tiny women, harvest those sisters. <laughs> Thank you, Nia. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, from Jamie BSN, thank you, Ozpeed Runs, for the charity effort, and Lysel for being an amazing content creator and very cool gamer. We got Aww, you. Thank you, Jamie. You emoticons in there as well. Thank you. And DJ B Squared says, I went on a date with Lysel once. She <laughs> turned up on time but was staring at her watch, said she got a gay split or something, then she sprints into the restaurant without me. <laughs> WTF? Spent the entire meal just saying skip whenever I was talking. Asked her to stop, but she said she had to. <laughs> oh, Fee, thanks. Very cool. I love that copy pasta. Super great. Um, <laughs> thanks for the, you know, thanks for contributing to charity. It's all <laughs> worth it in the end. Thank you. Very cool. Thanks, chat. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Let's just have some nice, straightforward donors for the next ones, okay, guys? Like, no memes, no copy pastas, right? We, we can do that just for a little while. Mm-hmm. So otherwise, I have to be on my toes. Yeah, you can never out. know. All right. Metro is not the most uh, radical kingdom for minimum captures. It is, as I said, in three and four caps. It's very exciting because it's basically the only known sequence break in Super Mario Odyssey is uh, Morning Metro, where you do Metro Kingdom as the third 
fourth fourth kingdom in the game rather than the I don't know whatever it is seventh or something. Um, it's not useful for any percent, sadly, but um, it is useful for minimum captures, which is why minimum captures is a really cool speed run. It's just so unique. Um, but yeah, in 13 captures, there's nothing too radical here. We're avoiding a couple captures that we would otherwise have gotten, but um, nothing too crazy. We're basically just trying to get through the kingdom as fast as possible, get some speedy moons. Um, we will be talking to Captain Toad soon, so make sure to say hi to Captain Toad. He appreciates it. Here he is. What a good boy. reading the Twitch chat right now. <laughs> yeah. They're very dedicated to memeing on you. <laughs> they really are. Uh, I'm not going to talk about any features uh, Toad may or may not have. That seems, sounds like it's entirely his business. Um, and I'm not going to poke my nose into it. Uh, he's beautiful the way he is. Um, and we should respect that. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Sniped. Nice. This uh, room that we're coming into now is actually especially interesting in three captures because there's a weird glitch that you wouldn't really have um, any other way of seeing. Uh, but when you're in the morning metro state, um, the kingdom is slightly different. And one of the weird differences is this pipe that I'm just passing now. Instead of leading to another sub area, which is what it usually does, um, the game just gets confused and teleports you back to the Odyssey. Um, which is really bizarre. I have no idea why it does that. Um, but it's useful because in that category we do this um, room last. I mean, we do it last in this category too. But in three caps you do it last. So you can just take that pipe and go straight to the Odyssey um, even quicker than warping. So it's just a fun little uh, weird glitch that ends up being handy in the speed run. There's a couple other things like uh, the shop in that area, which we don't end up going into in this run. But in three caps you do. That shop, if you listen closely, you can hear the sound of rain, which is weird, because uh, it rains during night metro, so I guess the game gets confused in some way and decides to turn on the raining track. But yeah, just a couple weird sort of abnormalities, because you're not really meant to go into the kingdom um, in that state, because you, you're only meant to be able to observe it from an island far, far away. It's only because of teleportation that we can get there at all, so... And that's Metro, easy done. I have no idea what kind of pace I'm on because I don't have my splits open, but nothing too bad's happened yet, so I'll take it. Do you want to spoil? <clears throat> Do you want me to spoil where you're at, or just sure? Move what, on what's in the time? Total ignorance. We're at about forty-two and a half minutes. Forty-two. I have no idea what that translates to, <laughs> um, but hopefully it's good. I generally don't memorize what uh, times I'm at, what places, because I just look at the delta, so... Mm. Um, that seems good. I'm pretty happy with that. That seems like a good number. 42 is a pretty solid number. More Captain Toad. He's going to be a little bit colder in this one. We're still not going to comment on any physical traits he may possess. Alright. Snow Kingdom is uh, also not too zany in terms of minimum captures. We do have to do a slightly slower version compared to any percent where we do, um, we get moons from all four rooms rather than just three, like uh, any percent does. Uh, there is the option to do snow dram in this kingdom, as we mentioned before, dram strats. <laughs> uh, no relation, but that's what they're called. Um, we have the option to do snow dram. It's a bit of a tricky trick. Uh, and I'm not consistent at it, so I do the other route, um, which isn't too much slower overall. That's one of the three moons we'll be buying. And then we go up here. Oops. We have, a <clears throat> we have a few more donations coming through. Go for it. 
So Anonymous sends twenty dollars. Thank you, Anonymous, because they also say have a nice, straightforward donation. Put Aww. this towards the defeat, defeat Ganon race. Wow, well, thank you, chat. I, I appreciate a nice, straightforward dono that I will now update our spreadsheet, taking us a little bit closer there. We also have forty-one dollars from Dr. Lexi MD. Twenty buckaroonies on behalf of my number one favorite Australian light show. Light. Live. Yep, yep, that's yep. the way of pronouncing it. Yep. And 21 buckaroonies on behalf of me. Nice. Uh, thanks for one upping. <laughs> Alex, very cool. <laughs> but thank you. Um, and then we have $21.11 from Callie. First time watching an SMO run, and Lysel is a pretty good runner and commentator. Osby runs Keep Rocking the Charity Money Raising. Aww. Less than three. Also, Harvest the Sister. I'm glad we're all on the same page. Thank you, Callie. You're sweet. <laughs> okay, we got more coffee, coffee pastas, I think. $20 <laughs> from Galarian Guy. You want to know the difference between you and Lysol? Lysol takes the thin path to get the big banana. She's not <laughs> afraid of failure. Taking risks is just another step before getting big rewards. So next time you're wondering why you're more successful, ask yourself, do you take the right path? <laughs> Thanks for that one as well. Very cool. At least it, it's uh, not negative, so that's good. Um, <laughs> yeah, you. inspirational. Take the right path. Yeah, exactly. You know, you just got to have that grind set. Thank you, Larry. Thank you everyone for your donations. Um, this event, they are going towards Cure Cancer. Um, and yeah, we're, we're pretty keen to uh, be supporting them. There are also actually um, some prizes on offer. So if you donate $10, uh, I think you get put in a draw to win some cool headsets. And if you donate at least $20, you get put in the draw to win like these cool um, LED light panels. So. Mm -hmm. I believe the headphones know. are Arctic headphones, which is the same one yeah. that I'm wearing right now. Yeah. So, there you go. Check out, I think I've gotten the correct link in the chat. Yeah, so you'll find the, the terms from... It's being run through uh, Cure Cancer's Stream Timber event. So you can read, read about the prizes and all that over there. Wonderful. Oh, yo, we got the quick pipe, which is fondly called the suck in the community. Um, <laughs> if you uh, land on that pipe at just the right moment, um, well, you can either roll into it or you can dive into it. It doesn't really matter as long as you are holding down the... Uh, how do I end up here? Uh, holding down the down button, you can... can get that quick movement into the pipe with no delay. I am down a moon and I forget which one I'm missing, but that's okay. We can improvise. Oh, well, that's one way of going back to the start. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm pretty sure I just missed a room, so we should be fine. No problem. It's probably the Goomby room, right? No, not the Goomby room. But I got that one. Wait, what did I miss? I got the Goomby Moon, right? I definitely got the Goomby Moon. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Okay. Which one was it, chat? The most, next most likely is this one that I missed the shards. Did I miss the shard? No. Someone says the entrance one. The entrance one? Did I? Okay. Oh, hang on. No, no, you didn't. A few. Oh, don't trust. Don't, don't trust. trust. Don't Just trust stream chat. Trend. Um, did I miss the entrance one? You are quite right. Oh, few. Okay, we're good. We're good. Panic over Thank chat. You, it's all right. chat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you, Hannah. All right, cool. No worries. We're good. All good. Um, someone pointed out that we have passed the 6k mark. 
chewing Yay! your rum. That's so exciting. Yeah, I wouldn't have called that moon throwing for content, but if content comes about because of it, you know, right? You're not going to see me complaining. <laughs> Can't make it too easy. All right. On to Seaside, there's uh, nothing too zany in Seaside, although the Any% percent route is quite different overall uh, because the Any% percent route uses a fish to get around a lot, and of course we're not going to be doing that. Any% percent has a trick called Fish Clip where you can force the fish out of bounds and then sort of swim through the void, which is good fun, but of course we are not allowed to do that. So we're going to be doing a couple other tricks, such as scaling a sheer cliff, which is going to be exciting. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Anything named Fish Clip is, I don't know, it's like that, that's just a good good name for a clip. You yeah. know, I, I'm with you there. Fish Clip's it's very cool. But I'm also up for scaling a sheer cliff. <laughs> that also yeah. sounds cool. It, I don't think that one has a name because I, I don't know, I think Min Caps is one of the only ones that really has it in there. Um, it's not very useful in any of the other runs, but... Uh, it's true, it could have been called Fish Dram. Unfortunately, they didn't think of that. Um, <laughs> we can call this Cliff Dram, then. <laughs> yeah, Cliff Dram. Sure, why not? Nobody else has named it. Alright, Cliff Dram it is. This cliff does have a couple spots that you can stand on, um, and it's a little finicky, but yeah, there we go, and we're up. Easy as. Nice. And that's cliff dram, <laughs> as they say. <laughs> it's a new trick! Yep, you heard it here first. <laughs> Got some more wholesome toad content, love that. And it's pretty easy up until the end of this kingdom. No problem. You might notice me every now and then. I will um, do what is called a spin pound, which is... Uh, that was a bit of a slow one. But a spin pound, basically the fastest way to get a boost um, immediately when you start rolling with Mario is to ground pound and then start rolling. And you immediately get the uh, maximum speed. So when we start out our rolls, generally, unless you're on a slope, in which case you can get even more speed um, by just rolling normally. But normally, uh, we look to start out our rolls with a ground pound. But the fastest way to ground pound um, is to do a spin pound because there's no animation for it. If you do them optimally, which sometimes I don't, but if you do do them optimally, um, it can be very clean and very fast. Sadly, I'm not the best spin pounder in the world, so I do sometimes lose a bit of time on them, but um, yeah, that's basically how the movement works. So you might see a fair few of those, I meant to go over, a fair few of those in, especially in high level runs, they have some absolutely clean spin pounds, which are beautiful to watch. Um, but I think it does destroy the joysticks, it's hard to say. I'm a Joy-Con. Uh, kind of person, um, which means that I am destined to eventually uh, cry about drift. So far I haven't had to, which is very lucky, but um, I think part of the reason that uh, SMO people often get drift is because of spin pounds, because in order to do them you have to do a full 360 rotation of the um, stick, and the faster you do it the faster you get the spin pound, so uh, that does end up killing... Sen it a little bit. Send your poor joysticks to N64 uh, jail, <laughs> along with, you know, all your Super Mario controllers. Uh, it's um, true. Super, Super Mario Party controllers. They all 
have a uh, an end to them. Yeah, the analog stick on the poor old N64 controller, that is a true tragedy. Yeah, hey, it comparatively... Got I've got another donor. Oh yeah, go for it. Yep. So we have $20 on Nia is fresh again. Thank you, Nia. Felt obliged to make this one, make a nice one this time. Getting to be a part of this community has been one of the best things in my life so far and has led to meeting so many fantastic friends, including Lysel. So proud to see her running at PAX and so grateful for getting to be her friend. We're Thank going for you. Harbour Sisters. <laughs> Love you, Nia. Thank so you. Harbour Sisters has a strong lead now. Great. So if you want to save them, you better get your wallet out, please. <laughs> Oh, no. My chat's definitely down no for fun. chaos. It's, it's no no fun if it's just a steamroll of a incentive, right? Got to keep it keep it close. Ch chaos, chaos is keeping the bid war as close as possible, guys. Mhm. Mm That's true. My chat does love making polls into fifty fifties. That's their specialty. All right, now we are into Luncheon Kingdom, which is. I don't want to say my least favorite kingdom, but I it has been known to cause me trouble in the past. It has a lot of really cool tricks in it. Um, for starters, the lava in it, which is pink because it's Pepto Bismol, apparently. Um, we do. Sorry, a... I'm just reading the copy. Is there another donation? <laughs> There's another copy. Bar. Sorry, I can't okay, even go... stop laughing now. You can read it out if you'd like. <laughs> it's fifty dollars from Resolve Palm. I went on a date with Lysa once. She turned up on time, staring at her watch, and inhaled her food. She also kept talking about peanut butter paste or something. She sprinted down the road full speed when we left. Weird gal. Very, very cool poem. Thank you for, the, for another coffee pasta. <laughs> uh, I'm glad the coffee pastas are going to a good cause, though, right? That's something. Um, <laughs> thanks, Paul. Can, can you imagine that, like, I don't know, can you tell someone that like oh copy pastas for charity like yeah. raising money through copy pastas like surely surely people would love that especially my chat <laughs> they love that <laughs> um but yeah so the lava pepto bismol allows us to do a few things um because for example i i don't know if you saw we did a death uh a death warp in Lost Kingdom, because as soon as you touch the poison there, you instantly die. So I did that on purpose in that kingdom. In this kingdom, if we touch the lava, Mario just gets burnt. So he does a little, you know, bounce on the lava thing. Which does allow us to do a couple of damage boosts um, to get to places where we probably shouldn't be getting. Um, and that's especially important in minimum captures, because in any percent, or I don't know if they do it in any percent, but... In a lot of categories, you can just capture the lava bubbles, which allow you to travel through the lava, but... Uh, in this category, obviously, we're not going to be doing that. So, um, there's a few instances where we will be doing some really cool, uh, slightly difficult jumps. Mostly just difficult because if you screw them up, you die. <laughs> but uh, we, there's a few save points right before them, so even if um, they do take a couple tries, we should be fine. But yeah, we'll be coming up to those soon. Um, I think they're pretty cool uh, because we do some crazy stuff where we bounce on Cappy a few times. Um, and... Uh, do some complicated movement like um, Cappy Return, homing Cappy Return throws, I forget what they're called, but it basically makes Mario do a cool little spin, so complicated movement stuff, but um, it's it's fun to see them in runs because often they don't, they don't get their chances to shine because they're not particularly fast or anything, they just give you the largest amount of distance you can get, which you only need in a few spots in the run. And we do use some strats here to cheat at gambling, which is, we love to see it. We leave Cappy on the other side and let him come back to us and it instantly gives us the moon. Which is good, because otherwise this moon would really suck. <laughs> and there's a down throw there, which, weirdly enough, um... You can only do down throws and up throws where you use motion controls to specifically throw down and up. You can only do that on Joy-Cons, so Pro-Cons are unable to do them. Um, so that's one of the advantages of being part of the Joy-Con Elite, is that I can do that cool trick where I just jump over it and down throw. Um, looks way cooler. 
And it's all, I think it's also technically slightly faster. I'm not entirely sure. But a lot of people are very against Joy-Cons um, because they're too small or something. So they end up using Pro-Cons anyway. My small hands appreciate Joy-Cons. Yeah, I like Joy-Cons. Yeah. I find them more comfortable. Especially with the uh, joysticks. They're s they're, they are admittedly pretty weird joysticks because they are so small. Um, but I find it, you know, it takes less effort to move them. So teeny tiny. <laughs> Alright, that's our first damage boost. That's not a hard one. Um, but we do bounce off the hat there. I'm going to go in this room and jump off the edge on purpose because we need to be at full health to get this jump safely. You can technically get it with only taking one hit of damage, but that is a little bit tricky for me, so I generally do this for safety. And then we're going to do a triple jump off this little ledge for Cappy. Boost once and boost twice. And there we go, that's the damage boost. There's one more of those to go, which the second one is uh, a little bit harder because that one does take two damage pretty much no matter what you want to do. Um, there's a possibility I could have done that one with one damage, but it's different movement if I'd wanted to, so I didn't bother trying. And we're just gonna bring this golden turnip back. Um, in doing so, we will be going to the shop shortly, which will set our checkpoint again. So if we die, we'll respawn there rather than in the middle of the lava lake, which would not be ideal. Yeah, the second damage boost uh, uses that trick I was talking about before where you do a spin um, right when Cappy comes back to you. Uh, which does involve having to shake the controller in order to home Cappy back to you. So you do motion controls mid-jump, which is a little bit nerve-wracking because... Notoriously, motion controls can be a bit finicky. But the Switch's motion controls are pretty good, so we should be alright. Got time for a couple more donors? Yeah, go for it. Yep, so we have $10 from Joel, with no comment. Thank you. And $69 from Lysol's editor. Hello Lysol, would you happen to know what happens every three months in North Queensland? <laughs> I do happen to know that. Yeah, you know what? I remember um, a particular politician mentioning that... Oh, that's unfortunate. I missed my hat. I remember a particular politician mentioning that um, somebody dies from a crocodile every three months in uh, <laughs> North Queensland. So thanks for reminding us of that. Make sure to always be safe when you're by bodies of water if you uh, live up in the top end. Be careful up there. <laughs> And that donation goes towards saving little uh, late little sister. So <laughs> oh shit, that is now in the lead. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd have thought? I mean, I guess yeah, they yeah, love some chaos. Maybe they're saving her from a crocodile. <laughs> yes. Nice. Oh, almost. <laughs> so we made that damage boost that time. We got over there. Um. But yeah, you do have to do some some cool cap throwy stuff to get over. It took me a while to uh, learn the jump in the first place because it wasn't wasn't it's not like any other jumps that you have to do in basic any percent. Um, it's one of the great things about Super Mario Odyssey. If you want to learn basic any percent, um, you really don't need to know a lot of tricks to get through a run and get one decent. Um, that's unfortunate. I'll make it though. Um, it's pretty beginner friendly. It's incredibly beginner friendly, actually. Um, so you can just sort of slowly add tricks until you feel more comfortable with the game and slowly shave off time that way, but finishing a decent run, you could finish a 120, 110 run without any major tricks, um, which are particularly difficult to, uh, learn. So yeah, it's a really cool speed run in that way. Um, but for example, that, that trick there with the damage boosting, there's uh, no cases of, uh, Happy homing return jumps that I can think of in the any percent run. So there's just a few things that the more categories you play, the more cool tricks you learn. Especially in um, runs like min caps have a lot, but also just running all moons, which is basically the 100% category for this game. It's very fun because you learn so much about the game that you wouldn't have otherwise known, or at least I did when I ran all moons. All right, one last moon and we are on to the, almost on to the scariest kingdom of this game. So we've got Ruined Kingdom, which isn't that scary. There is a giant dragon, but he's no big deal. 
Um, <laughs> but after that, we're off to Bowser's Kingdom, which is, um, it's got the hardest trick of this run in it. Uh, admittedly, the other min caps categories have an even harder, um, time in Bowser's Kingdom, but we are going to be doing a trick called Pokey No, so that's going to be very exciting. It is a completely wild sequence of jumps. Um, super cool to watch, so stay tuned for that. Don't die in the dragon fight. Yeah, the crazy thing about this run, um, which isn't particularly relevant during a showcase, but it's relevant when you're trying to get PBs and world records, is one wrong step and you could capture something, and as soon as you capture something, it's no longer a minimum captures run. Um, and there's a few instances where if you die in a boss fight, it'll bring you back to before a mandatory capture, such as this one. So in the ruined boss fight, we need to take a Y to get up to the dragon. Um, and if we die in the fight, it takes us back to before the wire. So we have to take the wire again, which does make it an invalid run. Um, I generally try not to do them. Um, <laughs> but sometimes it does happen. It's not a hard fight. Um, it's basically just if I'm not paying attention. Uh, but yeah, there's a couple of situations. The other one is the um, Mecha Wiggle fight where we had to capture the tank, the Sham. Um, that's another instance where if we had died in that fight, we would have to recapture the Sham a second time which would make it an invalid run. So yeah, there's a few cases. Um, there are places where captures are more scary and less scary. Uh, at this point in the run, the likelihood of capturing is relatively low. Um, there's always the possibility. Once we get past Bowser's Kingdom, it's almost zero. I'm not sure how you could capture something. You'd have to really mess up to do that. But And there's no captures. Um, in this fight itself, so nothing's changed from any percent here. There's just slightly higher stakes. Um, we do generally do damage boosts in this fight, which is why I was getting the hearts and why I took damage there. Um, you don't need to, it doesn't save you that much time really, because the dragon's on a cycle, so there's only so fast you can go. The only variable that changes how fast it is is how quickly you get the stakes out of his head um, and how quickly you ground pound his forehead once you've got that exposed but you don't really have to take damage to get up there quickly it's just you know that's technically faster but I don't think it would add up to much if he didn't would make a huge difference Bowser's kingdom is definitely the messiest kingdom if for two player runs because, um, as I mentioned before, the difference with two-player runs is that you can teleport using Cappy return cancels. So you can get Cappy super duper far away from you, and if you do that, you can get him to capture, um, or you can get him to tag, he's not technically capturing. You can get him to touch checkpoints, and then you can warp to those checkpoints. So you can go across the entire uh, entirety of Bowser's Kingdom without taking any wires, um, which is very impressive. Because the whole kingdom is wires, so... Um, yeah, it's super cool tricks, but unfortunately to do those teleportation tricks, each one takes anywhere between one and three minutes uh, to perform. Uh, and basically you just sit there completely still. Um, I would be mashing the ground pound button over and over again, uh, but it's not the most riveting stuff to watch. And they can be easily messed up, and every time you mess them up, you have to take another two, three minutes to set it up again. So that's why I decided not to do it for the showcase, but it is really fun if you're ever interested in um, checking them out. It's some crazy stuff, uh, what they found. It's very impressive that they managed to figure all of that out. Um, that was Circle who discovered that one. He discovered a lot of really cool glitches, but yeah, that one was Circle. And of course, I think I already mentioned it, but the other the other trick in this kingdom is the nut jump, which is a ridiculously hard trick. It can only be performed on the unpatched version of the game, where basically you grab a nut, a big seed, if you will, and you throw it in a body of... This is going to sound like a joke, but it's not. You throw it in a body of water, until it hits the ground of the body of water and at that point and only at that point you can throw and catch it an infinite number of times um, to gain infinite height but the catch is is that every time you throw it there's only a three frame window in which you can catch it again and you have to do it about 40 times in order to skip the final capture of the game 
So that is why uh, some of these categories, these min cap categories are absolutely insane. So this category doesn't have that. I figured that wouldn't be a very good idea to do live on Australia Speedruns <laughs> stream. Um, because there's no guarantee it'll ever work, uh, just because it's so difficult. I have gotten it, you know, first try before, but it doesn't happen that often. Um, it took me, yeah, exactly. It took me over a year to get a valid speedrun. I started speedrunning this category, or the category that looks just like this, except it has the nut jump. I started speedrunning that, um, when was it? It was May of 2020. And I only just got a valid run uh, at the start of this year, so it took me a long time to get a valid run because that nut jump trick is just ridiculously hard. And it's uh, unfortunately it's not a perfect rhythm either. If you could have a metronome, that that would be lovely. Um, that would help a lot. But unfortunately, it's an inconsistent rhythm um, because if you catch it on the first of the three frames. Um, then it'll be different to if you caught it on the last of the three frames. So it'll uh, naturally adjust depending on how you caught the nut. So you basically just have to do it over and over again until you get used to how it works. That's really the only way of learning it, sadly. I'm just gonna manipulate those um, Pokios to hitting that bomb for us. Usually 90% you just capture them, but of course we can't. Um, we sort of got a, maybe a type timely donor, $10 from Gay Lily Reed saying Lysol is doing great and about to get first try Pokino. Save sister. Oh. Ooh. We're pushing save even higher. <laughs> Thank you, Lily. It's currently winning by $18 and 89 cents or something like that. That's pretty close. Um, is the nut jump the thing that I saw you practicing before we went live? Yeah, yeah. I was doing it in yeah. Mushroom Kingdom. That's the one. Right, yeah. Yeah, it is uh, it is tricky, um, but it's it's mostly a thing where, you know, it's once it gets in your brain, it's it's not so hard. There are a couple people in the world who are consistent at it, um, hmm. which is CJ and Small Ant. I'm not sure if Red Slay is consistent at it. He has the world record, um, but I think the nut jump is the... Because um, he, he is Red Slay, the world record holder, is super good at two-player movement. I don't know what's up with his brain. I think he has two of them. I'm not sure. It's not confirmed. <laughs> but split your brain in half. Yeah, he must do. But yeah, the nut jump is, um, is a really tricky, tricky part of the run. And of course, it is the final trick in the run as well, which just... You know, adds insult to injury. Um, so yeah, there's not very many people who are consistent at that jump. And I, I wouldn't consider myself in those ranks yet. But yeah, it's a tricky one. There's a reason that Tyrone and, well, I don't call out Tyrone, he's fantastic at the game. But there's a, a reason that this category that I'm running right now is the most popular min caps category. It has the most number of runs because you don't have CRCs and you don't have the nut jump. So it is a lot more accessible and probably a lot more fun to most people. But yeah, Red Slay does some crazy stuff where he can... Uh, the two-player version of this game, basically one player controls Cappy and the other person controls Mario. Um, people who do one-player, two-player runs where it's just them um, controlling both, you basically control uh, Cappy with your feet and you control Mario with your oh. hands. Uh, which in <laughs> requires an insane amount of coordination. And Red Slay, uh, most people who use two-player just use it as an extra jump button. Um, occasionally they'll use it, uh, send Cappy out in a different direction, but obviously it's very difficult to pay attention to both at the same time. But Red Slay uses them independently of each other. He'll send Mario in one direction and Cappy in the other, and it is just absolutely insane. That sounds really cool. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's incredible. Alright, we are coming up to... Pokino! Pokino was first discovered uh, quite a while ago, um, but it really shook up the category when it happened, because uh, the category is one that has slowly developed over time, so when people were first running the category, the lowest number... I think it was 12 captures. I'm, I can't quite remember. 
Um, but it slowly went down over time as people discovered various skips to various captures. Um, but the- whoops, <laughs> that's unfortunate. Uh, one of the more recent skips discovered was, uh, Pokino. Which allows you to skip, um, the Pokio capture that goes up an entire wall. Uh, you can kind of see it up ahead of us, the, the one with all the moving bits. Um, so we get to skip that entire wall pretty much by being half out of bounds the entire time. And using some precise movement to scale the uh, the rings, because there's there's no platforms in there for you to stand on. There's a couple invisible walls that you can bounce against, um, but other than that, you're pretty much on your own. So it's a tricky jump. It took me a long time to get it. Um, I think I don't know about three months or so to get it for the first time after I first started trying. It might have been longer than that, but it took a long time. Um, yeah, and then the next week after Pokino was discovered, they discovered uh, CRCs, the teleportation glitch. Um, and <laughs> that unfortunately made Pokino uh, useless in those two player runs. So you don't actually do Pokino in two player runs. You only do... Um, you only do CRCs because you can just CRC all the way to the top. <laughs> but it's still useful in the one player runs, so... Let me explain what I'm doing here. Basically, this ogre, uh, when he goes to pull up his, his little hammer thing, pushes me half out of bounds. Um, and then I'm going to try and do a triple jump. Oh, that's unfortunate. We want to do a triple jump on that little ledge. Um, it is a tricky jump because you have to stay uh, just out of bounds. But obviously, if you go back in bounds, you're stuck. If you go too far out of bounds, you fall. So it's some pretty precise stuff. Yeah, it looks really tight. It is, it is. And then we're going to be scaling up um, those rings that are spinning over there. They have small platforms um, that are half in bounds, half out of bounds that we can also walk on. So we will be using those to get all the way up. But it is a tricky jump, so if it takes me a few tries, uh, that would be why. <laughs> um, you do kind of just have to know where the platforms are where the walls start. Um, <clears throat> if you bounce against the corner here, eventually you get back into the middle. I don't actually know why that happens, but it does. Whoops, that's unfortunate. All right, might need a bit of chat energy. <laughs> yes. We got this. Well, you got this. I'm not doing anything. I'm just watching. <laughs> well, I still appreciate the moral support. Fingers crossed. We'll do our best. Snapshot mode to turn the camera because Mario is beginning to fall off the ring. There we go. We're on to the next ring. Oh. Now we just want to do one last backflip. We'll be. Oh, this one's a bit tricky. There we go. Now we got it. Beautiful. Nice. That's Pokino. Fantastic. Very cool. Similarly to. Uh, Morning Metro and Bretro, uh, when that trick was discovered, there was a bit of debate as what to call it. It has been called Pokino, <laughs> which is a pretty good name, but I was on the side of Nokio, I'll admit, which I thought was vaguely funnier. Um, <laughs> but hey, Pokino is the one that's stuck, so that's okay. All right, and that's pretty much the last difficult trick of the run. Um, this is the final, second to final required capture up here. Um, luckily, even if we die in this boss fight, it brings us to after that capture, so there's no risk of, um, no risk of accidental capture from dying here, which is nice. Uh, we do have to do this entire fight, uh, which you usually do with a Pokio, um, without a Pokio, so this is called Birdless Mech. Um, it is actually used in any percent, because it's faster to not use a bird. There are a few different ways of doing the fight, which, uh, yeah, which, uh, Oh, that's lucky. Uh, which are faster in any percent. Um, things like target acquired, um, a few different strategies like that. But 
I will be sticking to the safer strategies because uh, I'm in no rush. <laughs> Which is a funny thing to say during a speedrun, but um, I just lost too many speedruns to birdless mech that I, I don't bother with the advanced strats. Maybe one day, maybe one day, but. We're gonna wait for the mech to be still. So he's gonna do a spin and then five steps. One, two, three, four, five. And he's still. Snipe, spew it. Get back on. And now we're ready to ace Harriet. Nice one. Easy birdless mech. Whew. Great. That was pretty good. Um. Not getting Pokino first try is uh, is always a bit of a run killer, but it happens, it happens. I think the rest of the run was generally pretty clean. So we're going to be moving on to um, Moon Kingdom here, and that's pretty much where the run ends after the whole Bowser escape sequence. Um, the final capture of this game is fittingly Bowser. There's no way that we know of to skip that at all. Um, technically, there is a loading scene right at the top of the uh, of the area that if you could infinitely jump, you could get to without Bowser. But currently, there's no way of um, getting to that that we know of. Alright, there is also one more trick in the run, um, which is Moon Skip. Uh, which is a pretty uh, easy trick. It's a really fun trick to learn if you're starting out. It can take a, a little while to get used to, but it's really satisfying because there is a whole segment of Moon Kingdom where you go through the Moon Cave, which is um, a sort of gauntlet right before the end of the game. But we skip that entire sequence um, by doing a series of jumps on top of the Sphinx's head. Because of course we have moon gravity, um, it allows us to really be uh, quick and do some big, big jumps. And we get to skip the moon cave. Yeah, it is one of the first big skips discovered. So it was very big for the community and it cuts out, I don't know how long moon cave usually takes, a couple minutes. But it's, it's a lot of time save for pretty much any run. Um, Almost every category of Super Mario Odyssey, which does complete the game, so excluding post-game categories, um, will use Moon Cave Skip, because there's no reason to do it. Uh, even all moons, in which you do have to get every single moon, which does mean, of course, that you have to get um, the moons that are in Moon Cave. Even that run still does Moon Cave Skip, because um, it's faster to go into the Moon Cave at a later date and skip it the first time you go. So it's a very important skip, and not too difficult as far as they go. But basically we just jump on this dude's head, do a ground pound, drop Cappy at the peak, do a wall jump there, wall jump there, and we're up. Oh. And that's this Moon low Cave grab skip. is just so fun. It is. It's very bouncy. Admittedly, it's a little bit frustrating for um, speedrun tech because almost all of your jumps lose you momentum. Because uh, you know it's it's very fun and floaty, but um, not as fast. So you do have to be careful with what kind of movement you use because it's very easy to mo lose momentum in the Moon Kingdom. All right, we're back to normal gravity anyway now, so. We're into the final Bowser sequence. We're basically just going to punch him in the crotch a bunch, as per usual. I love how Bowser has, like, this huge hat that can just be used against him. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Why, didn't sure he think this hat, but why does it have arms? It's <laughs> <laughs> a good question. Um, I'm going to do the gamer roll, which is to say, uh, you don't actually have to jump through that fire, you can technically roll through it, uh, if you're, if you're careful about it, because the hitbox for the fire only covers the ground, so even a roll will bring you slightly off the ground and allow you to jump over that fire, and it looks very cool to roll through fire anyway, so I always try to do it. Damn. 
Always get hit by one. There are strats you can use for these hats called fast hats, where basically you can stand over the hat and backflip over it um, so that you instantly get it as soon as it's thrown out rather than having to wait for it to come to you. They're a little bit complicated, I've never bothered to learn them, but that's definitely something that's on the list for me to learn. Because um, there's a lot of things that are any percent strats, like nut clip as I mentioned earlier, but fast hats is another one where I should definitely uh, learn them at some point um, if I want my runs to continue to improve, which hopefully they will. But yeah, there's, there's some crazy tricks. In this um, escape sequence, uh, even this alone has one trick, which is um, a pretty much top level any percent trick only, I believe. I think the top few runs do it, but almost nobody else does. Which is called 2D skip skip, um, because there's something called 2D skip. Uh, so you're skipping 2D skip, I think that's what it's called. And it allows you to uh, never go into this 2D section. You do an insane series of jumps um, to skip the whole thing. And only very few people are consistent at it. So I do not do it naturally, given it's only for the top of the top runners. But it's still very cool to see. Oh, That's 2D skip. And this skip is what we call an eeky deeky. It saves no time, but it looks cool. It's also known as an XD skip, but I think eeky deeky sounds funnier. <laughs> All right, and this is the final cutscene. Not too much here. You gotta do some um, sick sniping of these pillars, uh, which I am not usually too good at, but hey. There we go. Final few pillars, and then it'll be time. So time is when you hit the last pillar, or? Uh, time is when uh, Bowser captures the last wire, which doesn't actually count as a capture, but... <laughs> Bowser will slap the wire, and then time will be when he explodes out of it. So... It'll be in about 10 seconds. Yeah, it's always nice to hear the anime song at the end of this game. <laughs> always brings up morale. And... That's time. <laughs> there we go. That's time. Nice. Thank you so much, everybody. I'm I was I'm so happy to have been able to come on Oz Speed Runs and show off my favorite category to everybody. I hope everybody enjoyed. You know, it's a super cool speed run. If you guys ever want to try it, um, I've had a lot of fun running it over the past year or so. So yeah, thanks so much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed. Yeah, um, I just, when I went to hit the timer, I saw this one last donor. Well, maybe not last. There could be more. I mean, you know, guys, you want to give us more? But there is one in there right now from Resolve Palm saying, I can't wait for the Equid Dequid. <laughs> Thank you, Palm. It was a very good eeky deeky. It was flawless. All right. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, were there any other shout outs you wanted to make? Oh, well, not really. I mean, I, I stream on Twitch. Uh, if anybody ever wants to come hang out, I mean, I, I'd love to meet new people. I'm always down to hang out with people. I do speed runs um, and also other stuff. I'm also an artist, so I do a lot of drawing, which is a little bit weird, but hey, if you're into that, feel free to come and hang out. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, shout out to all of my mods for giving copy passes during this. That was really cool. <laughs> Um, thank you. Uh, and I really hope that, um, yeah, this is for a great cause. So thanks for everybody who donated as well during my run. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I'm sure the people who uh, will be benefited by this charity will appreciate it too. So yeah, thank you so much, everybody. And Peach is just going to head off without Mario or Mario. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> without Mario or Bowser. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a great ending to the game. Yeah. She was just like, I know I'm out. <laughs> cool. Thank you.